Good morning, my lovely viewers. Welcome to episode 7, and today I am having some Vietnamese homemade coffee as well as Vietnamese sticky rice. So on this episode, I actually am going to also include a little bit of episode 8, um, working on the bathroom because it's really quite long. And so on episode 7, what it's actually about is I'm going to show you what we have done and finished so far, as well as our plans and what we're going to do next. And on top of that, I'm also going to start tiling the bathroom. I want to add it to this video because it's typically the same thing as doing the kitchen except different marble um, while well, we're using marble instead of granite. Now I'm going to go finish emailing and then head to work. Whew, it's going to be a long, long day. Are you ready? Let's now continue with the room update. We're going to talk about the workroom and what we have done so far. And here it is! The door is being put in. Yay! It's looking more like a house. And here's the new wall that Chris already installed. We have to put a medallion on them. And don't worry about the crazy color. What's actually going to happen is everything on the bottom half is going to be white. And everything on top is going to be gray and all these lining, those are going to be white and medallions will be white so there's a nice pop to it. Later on I'm going to change and add a chandelier here but that's a later on project. Yay! So all of the doors been fixed, the molding has been added on that. We're really thinking of adding lights inside of those place just so it has a nice glow but that'll be a later DIY project. This is the pattern that we have in mind to make with a backsplash. This is kind of the tiling that we're thinking about doing, but it may change. This is where the backsplash is going to go, which is right um, behind the stove a little bit. So we also installed the end um, cabinet already, so now the stove is just going to fit right here. And behind it is a backsplash. Everywhere around it is going to be another type of pattern. So we're going to go ahead and wainscot um, the rest of the hall. Well, not really. I think we're just going to do it and finish here. I don't think we're going to um, wainscot the back hallway at all. So since this area gets so much light, I'm definitely thinking of doing um, a wall art of succulent plant or something. Something that hangs up. I'm not sure yet. But this, because it's getting so much light, why not add a plant room here? Like some trees or something. In the last room, we're going to actually cheat a little bit and push the bed yay way. Um, we are working on the walls, so wait up for that. Anyways, I'm going to go and prep the room so that when Chris is ready and finished with the hallway, he can start working on the room. And for the room, we're just going to use some of the thing that we were supposed to use in the living room, but um, so we bought it, but we never use it. And so we're just going to kind of use what we have. So the third room isn't really going to match the molding that we generally use throughout the house, but that's okay because that's kind of like the artistic room and I kind of want each room to have its own personality. Anyways, as Chris is busying himself, I'm gonna go downstairs and find something to do. I think I'm gonna start bringing the towel up after I clean out the bathroom. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's I feel like every time I walk upstairs, he added a new piece, so I wanted to share it with you guys. And I don't know, it's pretty hard to grab clips of him working and showing how the hallway and everywhere else transform when he works so fast. So we're just pretty much trying to keep on schedule at this point. Anyways, when I'm done with what I'm supposed to do, I notice that Chris is also done with the hallway. So now we're going to go ahead and add the shoe, which is pretty much the last step to the hallway. And then we're going to get started on the bathroom. So far, the shoes is looking really good. Chris is going to go ahead and work on the smaller guest room and then the bathroom next. We're going to be working on all the bathrooms today. So putting in tiling. The sink and stuff will come later today. We're just going to um, tile the bathroom floor. And of course, we'll paint into it all the vanity in later. There's another one over here that we have to do. So yeah, the door is just coming out of nowhere. But Chris already finished up with this room and it's just really simple. We use what we had left. And just to kind of add a border frame, we're going to add a um, medallion to the edges and that will just call it good because it's really time to move into the new house now. 
All right, so before we get started, we gotta make sure that the, uh, the machine is calibrated right and that there's enough water inside the wet saw so that it will cut the towels nice and clean. Before I start tiling, I had to lay out the bathroom in a way where it looks nice and uniform and that I don't have to cut a small piece towards the edges. Since each tile is 12 by 12 and I just measure the room and so I know what how much I need to cut off at the end of it. So now that I got the width figured out, I had to measure the length and it's time to start sweeping. The reason why we have to sweep is because we have to remove all the dirt and debris off the cement board so that the thin set will have a nice perfect bonding surface. Alright, so it's time to start mixing the thin set. And we're going with the white flex bond thin set because the towels are white and then any kind of excess is easily wiped off with the sponge seeing how it's matching with the tile. This thin set is slightly more expensive than the regular stuff that you can buy because there's a flex agent added into it that prevents the tiles from cracking when the house settles. It's a little bit of a process to get the thin set to be the right texture that you want it to be so that it bonds perfectly to the tile. Once you're done, you have to clean the mixer properly so that it doesn't break off in clumps when you mix your second batch. We're going to start off with the master bathroom first and then work our way towards the one next door. Before we got started, we carried up all the boxes, tiles, and a corner to each room size. This master bathroom is 42 square feet, and so we need about 9 boxes because each cage is 5 square feet. The color of the marble that we're using is called Paradise Beige, which is an in-stock color at Home Depot. So pretty much this is what it looks like. I'm going to open it for you guys to see. It has a nice little beige-like kind of vein on it. Right now, we're going to start off by spreading a nice even coat across the floor so that it gives the marble an even surface to lay on. But before we do, it's very important that we fill in all the seams in the cement board so that the marble has a nice solid backing underneath it, which will prevent it from cracking later on down the road. Baby, um, what are we going to do with the top part of the bathtub, like that area? We're going to continue up with it, except it has to follow the pattern on the floor this time. So as he is working on the bathroom, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing all the tile to the third floor. Well, if you count the basement, and that's considered the fourth floor, but that also needs the tile to be prepped. And so I'm going to go ahead and run upstairs, and when I came down, I noticed he already starts tiling without me, hence the pattern looks kind of weird. But you know what? According to Chris, the toilet is going to go there, so it's going to cover up that pattern anyways. So you know what? It's fine. Anyways, he's drawing those two little circles because he's actually going to cut a hole for where the toilet is. So we're going to get to see that. Now safety is very important when it comes to cutting the tile with a grinder, folks. And you don't want a chunk of marble flying at your eyeball. Anywho, Chris has warned me that when he is going to saw this little half moon out, it's going to be super loud and it's also really dangerous so you're supposed to wear your goggle and that's what he did. How loud is it? Well, I have to take it off while recording, but I'll let you hear it now. Seriously, that's enough for me. I'm just gonna move on to another room. I dislike this machine, whatever it is called. To be very honest, the whole time I was complaining about, can we just take the first few towel out? And he said no, so from this point on, I already pre-laid um, out certain pattern that I want him to do so that it'll flow more beautifully. So yeah, hopefully it's going to turn out well. According to Chris, it's marble, so it doesn't matter what pattern it's on, marble is always beautiful. And I'm just thinking, like, no bro, no, 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 it has to go with a pattern. So now we're going to cut the edge pieces and Chris is going to show you how. Okay. Alright, so now that the main pieces are in, it's time to cut the edges. The machine that I'm using is called a wet saw, which you can buy at Home Depot for about 200 bucks for this particular model. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to cut, I mean it uses the spinning motion of the saw to bring water up into it so that it cools the blade and makes it easier to cut the tile. You just push it through and let the blade do its work and just be careful not to get your fingers into the blade. So because the tiles are still wet, I have to use a rag to wipe off the excess water or else it wouldn't stick to the mortar rag. 
Even after that, I still have to double bond the tile, which is basically applying a small coat just so that it helps bond to the mortar on the floor so much better. So now that it's down, I have to apply a little bit of pressure to it so that it matches the same height as the ones next to it. Technically, I'm supposed to use a rubber mallet to pound it in, but I obviously don't have all my tools with me, so I'm just doing it the old-fashioned way. I didn't want to tile around the tub today because the tiles tend to slide down being that they're so heavy. So I'm going to save that for another day when I come back and do the grouting and because today's goal was to get all the main floors done. So far, it's looking so good and we're on schedule. But before I put these last two pieces in, I want Shantae to take off the door casing so it makes it so much easier to cut those last two pieces. So Chris is going to go ahead and start on bathroom number two. And Chris ran out of cement, so we're gonna mix some more and then go back. I already laid out all the tiles pattern based on Chris's measurement, so now he just had to follow through. This one. Right yeah. Oh, that flow more beautifully. Just a little bit shy. Gotta take it out and do it again. Anyways, as Chris is finishing up this bathroom, I'm gonna go ahead and rip the door frame in the back out. And since he already showed me how to do it in the other bathroom, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this one. And when I'm done with this, because I'm not strong enough, Chris is gonna rip it out for me. Yep, yeah, there you go. And the whole point is to make sure that the whole piece can be reusable, so don't break it if you can. Baby, compliment me. Good job, man. Yeah. All one piece, like he said. So now, with that being taken out, Chris is going to tile the floor area, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the third floor. Uh, setting it up here. We're working on this little area next. He did got it out. Not my end. <sighs> yeah, this is really stuck in the bottom. I couldn't get a bottom. So those are done now too. We're gonna have he'll come back and grout this some other time. Well, when I'm not here, but yeah. And then polish over a little. And then he'll work on this marble being on top of the tub too, so it kind of fold in. There's if we had more time, we would have took these ugly things out and make marble goes all the way up. But because we have no time, we want to move in early, so we're gonna leave it alone. So that's fine. Definitely have to grout just so it look more white. Anywho, now we're going to go upstairs and work on the bathroom location attic. In the last project, Chris has already actually finished by adding the shoes all around the whole area, as well as inside my closet. If you look at the edges, you can kind of see that, yeah, all of them has already had their shoes added in, but we're gonna work on this massive bathroom next. I pick up the marble and the pattern, but Chris actually designed exactly where it goes. And this is where the toilet's gonna go, and this is where the vanity is gonna go, and he based a tiling design based on where those things are at. And in the back, we actually have to tile the inside in a different manner, but the shelves will go all the way up toward the ceiling. And yeah, here's where I place the tile based on his calculation. And because it's going toward the end of the day, we just wanna hurry up and finish, so I didn't really show much of his work I'm just gonna show you how it looked like when it's done anyways it's already 5 p.m. and we're just going to finish this bathroom and call it good we're not gonna finish the first floor bathroom because Chris said he'll just do that Monday this way um, you know we can go home and start cooking dinner and whatnot but as you can kind of see there's a certain pattern that Chris is going with so there's this little small little closet door right I open it and I notice that there's plenty of room for me to put jewelry so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my jewelry um, door so I may add like um, stuffing here or memory foam for me to insert my ring this way I kind of have something that goes all the way down and the best part is there's actually three so I can do one for my necklace well maybe two for my, ne for my necklace one for my rings oh my god this is gonna be so cute 
then on the inside, we're going to have to um, add a closet rod and I'll hang some clothes in here. I'm thinking more of coats and whatnot because I don't wear those as much and I have so many. And those are going to go all the way across. I think two of my closets are connected and the other one is by itself. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to do just um, winter coats in there because I don't really wear them as often. I'm really thinking of adding another wall or you know a small little frame wall to all the opening or side and apply you know hanger space for them so this way I can kind of hook the clothes to it and if I walk in I can kind of see the shelves and it's like browsing through a library but for clothes. Look at this one honey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has a sensor? Yeah. The problem with having a sensor? Well, since it's going to break. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes the best technology is to Um, well, I want the one that pulls on top, like, um, Dad's house. I, I like this one, the one that's, like, plush, pushing the button on top, too. That's nice, too. This one for the small bathroom. This is nice. And for the bigger bathroom, I would like something like this. Which one? Is this a better brand? It's one of the best brands out there, that's why they're so expensive. Okay, well then let's just stick to all colder. Yeah. Well, I mean, colder. Colder. Same thing as that one, but this is twice as expensive. Why don't we just get a cheaper so we ended up getting this brand um we really like these toilet because he said they make the best products here and so we're going to choose this toilet right here because it fit with the house the most and the bottom floor bathroom will be the other smaller one so now we have to pick out faucet and shower head this is the one we have in mind it has two head and i'm going to try to find a better picture of it but yeah it kind of looked like this but i'm not sure we're gonna go with glacier bay because apparently they're not a very good brand so yeah it's just gonna look kind of like that and this will be our faucet which i really love because i don't know it just looks sleek it'll fit with the vanity and i love it so on the way out i noticed a little area with a lot of tree and i was like oh my god i cannot wait to buy these so we're not going to get it today because I don't have a place to put them and the move is going to kill them and so we're going to buy this after moving in but look I have found my succulent garden and to be honest Chris doesn't really care much for plants and he doesn't really like the, these very much but it makes me happy and so he likes doing things that makes me happy and I'm really grateful to have such a wonderful man as my husband but yeah don't you just love all these colors it's so cute and I'm gonna get them all and He's actually gonna build me this nice little garden shelves for all of them. That will be part of the house series number two on the house decor stuff. Oh my god, cute little bonsai tree! It is so cute! Oh my gosh. I'm going to buy everything! We honestly didn't get home till like 7 and so we ordered carry out for dinner. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in episode 8. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below what I should do with my walk-in closet.